So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Adoption Engagement Forum on Friday, the 17th of March, 2023. Great to see a few new faces um, here today. Uh, a quick uh, reminder, as usual, for anyone new to uh, Open Active um, who is on the call or who is watching the recording to please join our Open Active Slack workspace. It's a great place to keep up to date with everything that's going on in the initiative and um, all these community groups like the Adoption Engagement Forum and the, and the W3C uh, community group as well. Um, and it's also a really good place to uh, chat and communicate with other people in the community, uh, like some organisations who are on this call. So please do join us there if you haven't already. Um, if you are watching the recording, uh, there'll be a link to these slides in the description. So you'll be able to click through and um, you know click through to all these links of uh, previous previous meeting recordings and all all that usual sort of thing a quick look at the agenda so we'll we'll do a, a quick round of introductions just at the start just so everyone gets to to know who who they are on the call with um we've got dave barter here um great to have him here so thanks for joining us dave he's going to be giving a, us a bit of an update on a project he's been working on in devon um, which should be really interesting. And then we're also going to have uh, a little discussion um, which will be led by Andrew Newman from the ODI and Charlie Merritt Clark. Um, and they're going to be talking about uh, work uh, in the Open Active uh, initiative around use case communities. So that should be should be really good as well. So if we get going just with uh, some introductions, as I say, that'd be really useful. Uh, so if I could start with you, Adam, this week. Hi everyone, I'm Adam Freeman Pask. Uh, I am head of digital innovation at Sport England. Um, thanks for having me, Tim. Great, thanks, Adam. Uh, Andrew. Uh, hi, I'm Andrew Newman, principal data specialist at the ODI and ODI's project lead for Open Active. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Charlie. Morning, everyone. Charlie Merrick Clark, a director at Playfinder Powering Book Tech, um, and representing from Open Active Steering Committee. Thank you, uh, Kanika. Hello, Kanika Joshi, this side. I lead the impact strategy for Open Data Institute and also uh, I'm completely embedded into the MEL frameworks for the Open Active project for phase five. Thank you. Uh, Jules? Uh, hi, yes, I'm Jules, I'm the uh, communication manager for York Sport Foundation. So we're looking at activity finders and getting clubs registered and putting stuff on. Great, thank you. Uh, Oli? Morning all, I'm Oli, I work at London Spore, which is one of the active partnerships. Thanks. Uh, Dave, if I could come to you next. Uh, I'm Dave Barter. Um, I am the um, CEO of a massive two-man company called Nautical Limited, and I'll tell you a bit more later. Great, thanks, Dave. Uh, David? Hi, I'm David Dinners. I'm the uh, Head of Communications at the ODI, and I work closely on the um, Open Active project. Thank you. Uh, Nikki? Hi, good morning. I'm Nikki. I work for the Active Partnership National Team. So um, Jules and work with Jules and Ollie closely and others on the call. Great. Thanks, Nikki. Uh, Tom? Hi, everyone. Tom Marley here, co-founder at Played. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Howard? Hi, Howard Askew at the ODI, part of the Open Active team, leading on some of the technical work. Thanks, Howard. Uh, Chris? Morning, everyone. Uh, Chris Bancroft. I'm the data management specialist at the ODI, working on the Open Active Initiative. Thanks, Chris. And Nish. Morning, uh, Nish from Iman, uh, and I also sit on the steering committee with Charlie. Great, thanks, Nish. I don't think I've missed everyone. Um, and just for anyone who doesn't know me, uh, I'm Tim Corby, and I work in the ODI's uh, Open Active project team as well. I'm an engagement consultant here at the ODI. Cool. Uh, thanks everyone that's really good and great to see some some new faces on the call as well so th thanks for joining us um first up we've got uh dave so i'm going to pass over to dave i don't know if you've got any slides or anything you wanted to share dave or if um i have got some slides if that's, if okay, I can share my yeah i will stop sharing okay um what are we going to share we're going to share this screen okay how are we doing can you see me can you see it okay uh, yeah, that's coming through. Yep. Excellent. Right. Let's um, run this little slideshow. How's that doing? Perfect. Yeah, it looks great. Love it. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Um, right. I put this together in a bit of a rush last night. Um, and um, uh, to thanks, um, Tom, for 
an introduction. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to talk through um, my company, um, what we're doing with Open Active, and um, uh, and and a few things that, that we're involved in, and our experiences with Open Active. So I hope that's okay. Um, give, give you a bit of a, um, a, a view on our side of things. Um, who am I? Um, my name's Dave Barter, as you know. Um, what am I? I'm a youth system entrepreneur. Um, everyone says they're great entrepreneurs, but I'm not. I'm rubbish at it. Um, I formed a company many years ago um, after working in the Royal Mail. Um, I was bought by a large financial service provider. Um, I managed three years in there. I couldn't stand it. Um, I left before my shares vested. <clears throat> um, ended up writing books about cycling um, because it's, it's one of my main obsessions. Um, and <clears throat> it ended up building an expertise in SQL and GIS. And having done that, I formed a small business called Nauta Guide Limited. And what we've done over the years is basically build up a huge expertise in, in building um, location based services, particularly around interactive maps. Um, and, and our model, again, on the theme of being a rubbish entrepreneur, is that we have built um, products and services and we've sold that IPR to bigger companies. So we built a, um, a housing management system focused around GIS and that was bought by a provider in the um, housing industry for not much money. We built a system for um, uh, uh, boundary management in election services, and that was purchased by Civica um, for not huge amounts of money. And a few, having sold the, the last bit of IPR to Civica, me and my business partner sat and thought, well, what do we want to do next? And um, I am, as I said, an obsessive cyclist and a really tight git. I hate paying tax. And of course, and, and so I put the two together and thought, hang on, if we could get people doing more stuff, there'd be less burden on the NHS and um, I wouldn't have to pay it so much tax. So how could we do that? And we then looked at the movement around um, social prescribing, thought to ourselves, well, if we could make discovering activities easier, then um, people would get fitter and they would become less ill. Um, and obviously, like all kind of um, budding entrepreneurs, we thought we were the first people to have this idea. Um, and we spent months gathering data um, and prototyping things um, and seeing what we could do until we found this other ecosystem that's out there. And what we've done recently is, um, because we're kind of getting to the end of our careers, um, we decided that instead of having a limited company with all the IPR in there um, and shares and what have you, that, that we would change the way that we work and we would move to a um, community interest company basis. So why don't we do something for the better good, um, see what service systems and services we can build to support the idea of active prescribing. And that's where we formed Lucaria Open, um, which is we're in the process now of transferring IPR um, management systems, finances, et cetera, from Nautiguide into that. So whilst I have a Nautiguide email address, we'll soon be a Lucaria one. So what is it we're trying to do? Well, as I said, the, first, the, the main uh, um, role of, of our new community interest company is to increase participation and looking at the job titles and the companies of the people that are on this call I think we're all on the same uh, theme um, and working towards the, um, uh, the, the same objective. Basically what we see down here in Devon um, is there's little coverage, um, there are few options for people um, to find things that they can do that can make them more healthy um, and some of this stuff needs reframing. It's a bit harsh. It's like, you know, you're a fat git. Why don't you do some exercise? Um, it could be done better. It, 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 it thinks some things like um, cycling, for example, which I'm a big advocate of, scare people rigid. Um, and so if it's framed as cycling, they don't want to do it. Whereas if it's framed as a group activity outside, by the way, you need a bike, they, they, they may well um, uh, uh, participate. And the second, the, the, the main purposes of our company is to actually develop data and make it open uh, and um, to embrace standards that are out there, um, open active and open referral being two of them, um, but also to provide data in bespoke manner for people who may want it in Excel spreadsheets or JSON APIs or XML or, you know, um, flat files, what, what, what have you. Um, but also to develop open source software um, and everything that we do uh, from now on will be open source um, through the community interest company. Um, we, we've been using open source software for years and we're not about to, to, to change that. 
Um, so where are we at the moment? Um, well, we have quite a lot of technology that we've built. And some of it is very robust because it's based on stuff that we've been doing for years. And some of it is as flaky as a um, something that's very flaky indeed. Um, and we've, um, we, we, I've categorized what we've done into these four areas of the data that we can currently consume, the processing that we do on that data, what we've got in terms of user interface and what we're doing in terms of publishing. So in terms of consumption, we are reading um, all the open active feeds. Um, we built a module that um, uh, discovers all the RPDE feeds, um, uh, loads them into a, um, a database, and then on a daily basis, updates the database um, with everything. So we've now got a complete database of everything that we can find um, from the various open active feeds that are out there. And we've got the same with um, open referral. So from open active, we're getting activities, from open referral, we're getting organizations and, and, and um, um, locations and what have you. We're consuming data from active places. Um, we've built some custom feeds. So we, we, we download the park runs that are going on at the moment. Um, we do some web scraping and get um, uh, data around um, sustainable food locations. So these are food co-ops, um, farmers markets, places where you can go um, to, to, to possibly eat better. Um, and mental health, so mind locations and support networks and what have you there. Um, we've integrated with a third party who is a um, commercial um, events data provider um, and are working with them. And we've also built um, interfaces to allow file uploads. So you can just chuck Excel spreadsheets or CSVs and what have you at the system um, and direct entry. Um, and we're working on a prototype at the moment, um, which is using image processing to take um, event data from images. The idea being you can take a picture of a leaflet and it will scrape the event and, um, uh, and, and relevant bits from that leaflet itself. In terms of processing, um, we built a load of classifiers. So all the data that comes in, we actually classify it. And this is because I come from the credit reference agency and we used to do horrible things with all of you is we used to classify you in terms of what kind of people we thought you were. And what we're doing is classifying everything that we consume into, um, at the moment, five uh, different classifications. We categorize it as to whether it's an activity, a mental health um, uh, thing, something to do with um, food, something you can do at home. Um, we look at the exertion level. So is this something for somebody who's just getting into exercise? Is it someone who exercises already? Is it for someone who's mad keen on it? Um, we age band it. Um, we have a work life indicator that we've created. Um, and this is designed to map activities to people's um, particular circumstances. For example, if you're a single parent, you're probably going to struggle to do stuff in the evenings, but during the school days and outside of holidays, you might be OK. And also price. Um, we try and map everything. So we've got a whole series of geocoders and a geocoder takes data and, and uses it to place something on the map. Um, and from the data that we get over here, we need to be able to put things on the map using coordinates. Great for those people who've got it. Found some grid references in the data. Um, postcodes is very common. And then as a last resort, if we haven't got any of those, we go looking for place data. So like Swindon or Brixham or what have you to stick it on the map. Um, and then we've got a load of processes that we've written. Um, and this is to present the data back out the door and to deal with some of the stuff that comes in because in the data we look at, we see some plain text, great, that's easy. We see HTML, that's a bit harder because we have to make it safe and sometimes remove some of it and decide whether we're gonna use their HTML or ours. We see a whole load of cruft. And these are these people that cut and paste stuff from Word straight into web forms and it gets in um, and we have to remove that. Um, and we also have um, our reframers. So this is taking a activity listing and kind of reframing it into nicer language. Um, in terms of the user interfaces we've built, we've built a prototype system called My Active Prescription. Um, it's something that we're, that we're looking to expand into a pilot down here in Devon. And um, I'm hoping in April to begin work on a pilot in Brixham where um, we're going to um, create an infrastructure for the residents here to um, provide event data and business data and um, um, 
all sorts of lovely things that they think the community can engage with and also for the community to find and discover this stuff. I'm very much focused on the demographics in Brixham, the businesses in Brixham, the providers in Brixham and what have you. Um, but we've also got a secret project, um, which isn't secret anymore now because I've told you, um, and that is we're building a complete um, uh, framework in Django, um, if you know of Django, um, uh, uh, that, that will allow, that will include an open active model, module so that anybody can then consume open active and other data um, and then build a Django based site on top of it. And the idea there is to do some really rapid prototyping about different approaches for UI, discovery, um, event providing, um, uh, event editing, moderation, all those different things. And Django just allows us to to do to to prototype quickly and um, uh, and and change things and break things and and what have you. Um, and what I'm working on today, if you don't believe me, I can even show you the code. Is um, I'm working on a um, uh, a Django module to publish open active data that you haven't got back out the door via an API. Um, so we've 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 got a prototype engine for consuming it and loading it into a Django model. And now we're working on getting it out the, um, uh, out the back door. Um, how am I doing for time? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I don't know how much longer you've got, but yeah, maybe yeah. another few minutes. Um, uh, let's see if I can um, just very quickly show you. This is a um, prototype site that we built um, on top of the data. Um, and, and this includes all of the, the data sets that I've talked about. And this, um, loads of people have done this. I know there's something in here that we that, that we're we're quite keen to, um, to to do more work on that you may find interesting. Um, and the idea is, you it very quickly finds your location. What's the point of showing you anything um, that isn't near you um, unless you're looking to do stuff that is online? And it asks you a couple of questions. So you know, what describes your situation? Well, I want to become more active. Um, Tell us one more further thing. Um, well, I, I work. So I now know a couple of things about you is I know you're looking for activities and I know your work life situation. Um, and I know these are quite crude, but the idea is to get stuff in front of you very quickly without you having to fill in own onerous forms or register or do anything. Um, and so having done that, we've gone to the database and um, we've um, uh, brought out a whole load of activities um, and um, we've, we've put them in front of you. So th this isn't rocket science. Loads of people have done this and there are lots of portals that, that, that work in that way. And there are all sorts of filters that you can do and categories that you can change. So I can look at activities or I look at healthy eating near me or I can look at well-being um, or I can look at the stuff that I can kind of do at home. And these are using our, our classifiers. Um, the one thing that we've added is this idea of building up um, your own prescription. So I can scroll up and down here and I see a um, fitness class thing. Oh, I quite like that. So I'm going to add it to my prescription. Uh, and uh, down here, um, what else have we got? We've got a badminton club. Oh, that sounds interesting. So I'll add that to my prescription. And it creates me my own little prescription um, we this has been put together quite quickly the what I actually want is for it to look like a fake prescription um, and the idea being that you're doing something good yourself rather than your doctor or your link worker filling it in for you and now I've got my prescription um, I can just through buttons down here I can just email it to myself and I've got my list of things to tick off um, or I can click the link and I can go and book it um, or I can get it into a printable format. Um, or, and, and this allows somebody like a link worker to actually do it for me um, and print it out and give it to me and say, go home. And if you want to do these things, then just scan that QR code and it will take you straight, straight through to the, um, the booking link at the, um, at, at the other end. Um, so this is the sort of thing that, that we're um, prototyping at the moment. And the Brixham project will um, be a variant of this um, it, it, the, the style of it will be very different because our demographic down here is actually very old. Um, I'm 56 and I'm young in this town. Um, uh, the average age in Brixham is 62 or 63, I think it is. And so we'll be talking to an older demographic and, and we're probably going to change the, 
the, the, the look and feel and the phraseology and the, the mechanics of the site. Um, but the idea will be th the same concept is that businesses and, um, and providers down here will be very, find it very easy to get their events into the system and we'll then publish them out to the bricks and residents and also to the, um, the, the, the Open Active um, uh, API. Um, so that's all good. Uh, what um, have been our chat? Oh, come on, slideshow. Oh, I don't know what happened there. I'll just make it bigger. Um, what challenges did we face down this, going down the, um, the Open Active Road? Um, firstly, it's really important for me to say that I love the standard. I don't have any problems with it at all. So that isn't one of our challenges. We totally understand the way it's been done. We totally understand why it's been done. We totally understand why it's based on schema.org. So all of that is, is great. And these are things that we've just found with the data. Um, and they're probably more aimed at the providers um, rather than the standard itself. But there are some dead feeds in there. And a couple of guys on the call know that I've moaned about this, um, not mentioning any names, a, a large provider of cycling services um you know their data is completely out of date and, and has been for a while and that's a real shame um uh, and um down here in in devon our, our secondary issue is is coverage is is really we we've got not a lot and um what we i found from the open active feeds down here is the booking systems are great so the sports centers um, and the leisure centres and big providers, yeah, there's lots of good stuff there because they've done their integrations. But in terms of other providers, there's NAUT. Um, and this is why we're having to ingest from other feeds and why we feel it's really important that we build the, um, some of the local interfaces um, into, the, into the systems. And I do know about open sessions, by the way, and it, open sessions is an, a, an option, but for, for some of our... And businesses down here, it isn't. They're, they they'll struggle with it. Uh, that they need something even simpler than that, um, which is where we, we, we're trying to help. Um, consistency is another issue in data. Um, in order to map the events that I pull from Open Active, I have to look at seven separate paths in the schema to geocode something, and this is because not everyone puts coordinates on there. Some people put postcodes. Some people don't put any location information on their events at all, and so I have to use the provider. Some people do, but it's only a place name. Um, I found um, UK grid references in there, but in different places. And so that, again, it's a data issue. Um, it's made it quite hard for us, is because we have to do all this post-processing um, to, to get a lot of stuff um, on the map. And then there's nomenclature. And again, I know there are um, efforts to sort this out. Um, on my last look, I think I found 1,024 tags in um, different tags um, in the open active data. And some of them are just hilarious. And this is an example of one. There's a tag that says Les Mills Tone. It's got a bloody trademark thing on it. Um, and um, there are um, all sorts of these and it makes um, classifying and um, a, a, and creating um, a user interface where users can find things on tags actually very difficult. Um, and um, a, 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 again, we, we've had to write an entire engine where we read in all the tags um, and we then re-tag based on the tags that we know and any new tags, we then either accept them or we set up um, uh, our own mapping tags um, to them. Um, and then um, the final challenge is my problem, not yours, is um, uh, Open Active um, has this concept of a, a record um, having a ID and an org, and in a way that's the primary key, um, and I, you use that to um, either insert a record or to update it, um, which works great in a lot of systems. It's really difficult with Django because Django uses an ORM, and um, uh, in order to get that to work nicely with the ORM, you have to do insert record to record at a time, and it's very slow. And so I'm having to write a whole load of technology based um, around um, open th this problem in order to support bulk loads. And um, uh, uh, if anyone solved this problem, by the way, in Django, please let me know and I'll stop work. But 
if they haven't, then it's something that we're kind of doing because anyone going down the Django path is going to bump into this when they try and import half a million records. Um, and I think that's that, that's really all, all, all I've got to say is the um, the other guys, some of the guys on the call have heard this. You know, we're huge supporters of Open Active. We're, we're, we're committed um, to um, doing what we can to get more data into it um, and to um, to increase um, adoption um, and also to open source um, all the data that we create um, and the software that we create and kind of a learn along with um, the rest of you. So thanks very much for listening. Um, got any questions then far away. Thanks Dave, that's that's brilliant and really useful. Um, I'm going to have to be quite strict on time unfortunately but, but we do have time for a, a couple of questions just if, if anyone wants to um, to ask Dave anything or, or comment on what he's presented. Yeah I've got a question that's okay. Yeah go for Nish. <clears throat> Thank you. Firstly, thank you, um, Dave. That was that was awesome. Thank you for taking the time <clears throat> to talk to walk us through that. Um, I got confused about Brixton for a while, then I had to Google that there's a Brixton in Devon, and it made sense. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I should have said that. It's not Brixton. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so um, I'd love to have a chat with you afterwards because I've got a whole bunch of questions, and I think some learnings yeah. that we can we can share yeah. together. Um, I think Jules raises in the chat. I had a question actually about Parkrun. So it looks like you've, you've because I know Parkrun have various sort of pseudo hidden APIs knocking around and fees and stuff. Yeah. Um, for a long time, we've been trying to get Parkrun data in the open active format for, from them basically. Um, but if you're consuming it and looking to then publish out data, is that something that you've done or I think you're doing to, to put that Parkrun data in an open active format? I'm really happy. Feed? Yeah, I'm really happy to do it because what I'm doing is exactly what you've tried is I'm sneaking there. Um, uh, they've got a JSON endpoint that I found um, yeah. that, that, I, that I'm essentially scraping. Um, and um, when I'm really happy to, because um, at the moment our, our initial strategy was that we would republish everything that we knew we created. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we wouldn't republish other people's data. But if Parkrun were happy, I'd be really happy to republish their feed um as, as a result great i think that'd be great to look into because we've we've been we literally talked about it last week or two weeks ago whenever it was um and i know sport england have a have a good relationship with with parkrun that maybe adam that could help broach that conversation so if they're if they're if they're happy to let the group here use a what is a publicly available api to then publish it in a different format um, they can still own the data, right? That can all still be the same attribution and everything else. Then that could be a really good, a good win for, for everyone, I think. Yeah. No, I'm, I'll be really happy to do it. Looks like uh, Jules, um, I'm going to have to be quite strict on you, Jules, if, if we're going to so stop us going down a parkrun rabbit hole. But yeah, feel, feel free to, uh, to add a question. No, I'm saying it's fascinating to see the much wider use of the data, which uh, really quite interested in. So I think there's, a future and also with scraping i've just been on a call with a uh, yeam tech in bradford and they do a similar one for different kinds of data and it's it's good to see all this being brought into a wider thing than just focusing purely on activity and i'll have to start a separate conversation about the les paul the apx <laughs> uh, prs <laughs> it's a prs isn't it it is oh, i'm such and, a, uh, i'm such a crack guitarist don't don't i'm i'm no I'm, ditto but we'll have a talk <laughs> on this later <laughs> yeah. i can i can connect you afterwards jules that's fine uh charlie you you've got your hand up go to you next yeah dave that was really really interesting thank you congratulations on what you've achieved so far and looks really exciting where you're going to go and um, these are relatively rhetoric as our questions now but i'd love to try and get answers out over the next few days and weeks of getting to know you and the organization but i'd love to get a better feel for what your you think your like lucario's role will be um uh, what you think your long-term vision of mission is because you by the looks of it with the breadth of what you can you're capable of there's a there's a range of applications um and focusing on lots of different things will be difficult i imagine so it's going to be really interesting to work out what you think your, your role will be in the long term and i guess that leads on to a question of how we as open active and the community can best support you um, what do you need help with beyond solving the challenges you've listed which which is obvious like what what can we do as a community to help you and um and break down break down barriers but um i think there's a question that will need big answers and need exploring over time 
I can answer the first question in 30 seconds is that um, our, our vision is, is that we will create technology that will be used by the wider community for the better good. Yeah. And, and we need to get ourselves into a position where as individuals, it's sustainable for us. And this is the classic open source challenge. Yeah. That, 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 that we, we will not become a massive data providing company. We're, we're not good at that. But we will become a, 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 com a couple of few guys who can develop some innovative stuff that other people can use and can create data. That's where we want to go. Um, and, and it's a long journey at the moment, having so many conversations with so many people about so many different ways of, of sustaining this. Um, and I think that in, in terms of support, is it, it's just this networking is great. You know, it's talking to people and finding out that other people are trying to do similar things to us and working together on them rather than, you know, um, off in my own silo, banging my head against the wall, trying to solve a problem that someone's already solved. Um, that, 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 that's what we just want to become part of this community. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Dave. I might have to leave it there. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sure there's probably other questions as well. Um, but we can maybe come back at the end of the call if, if there's a few minutes at the end, if uh, anyone else has any other questions. Um, but just to move the agenda along, we've got next up, we've got Andrew, if I can come to you and pass over to you. I think you've got a couple of slides. Are you showing them yourself? Uh, yeah, I can do, Tim. That's fine. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so let me just set up a share. Um, Uh, let me zoom. I'm having some problems sharing, Tim. Have you got the slides and can you share them? Uh, I don't think I have your slides. If you're Sorry. able to send them to me, I can share them. I will do that now. Sorry about this, folk. <coughs> Supported by IT security. <laughs> awesome thanks tim um i'll just use the uh patrick valance phrase uh so uh next slide please uh yeah so um use cases so so open active um for a while has been predicated on this kind of idea that we publish lots of data about activities um to make it easier for people to find activities and book them uh, and you know we've kind of got this strap line of making it as easy to book physical activity as it, as it is to book a hotel um, but in the current round of open active what we're trying to do is open that out a bit and to become a bit more uh, focused on things like social impact and inclusion and actually using the data that open active is generating for for kind of wider social impact um and the way that we are kind of looking to do that is by defining a process or a set of processes or a framework uh, to enable people to explore those, those additional uses of the open active data um uh, and this is the kind of um, spiel that comes out of the, the funding agreement between uh, the ODI and Sport England around Open Active. And, and so, so use cases are about our ability to uh, generate social impact um, within communities and to do that in a reasonably agile way. So, so that's kind of why we are thinking about use cases and why we're looking to develop a use case framework. So let's go to the next slide. So I guess we should start with some basics so we all understand what we mean by a use case and a use case community and a use case framework. Um, so we've kind of uh, developed our, our definition of a use case over the last couple of months and we've got to the, something that we think is quite application focused. So we think a use case is basically any scenario in which open active data infrastructure can be used. Um, uh, and, and examples would include things like improving access to sport and physical activity, uh, improving people's health and well-being, uh, reducing health inequalities, embedding digital and data uh, to, to support wider initiatives. Um, it could, it, you know, use cases could include things like really big ticket things like, you know, solving social prescribing challenges across the country. Uh, they could re include really small ticket things like, you know, really focusing on, on provision in a, a village or a town or a city. 
Um, so, so, so we've kind of taken a really broad definition of what we think a use case is. Um, we've been thinking about what a use case community might be. Uh, and we think a use case community is basically a group of people or organizations who want to explore the, the potential of open active winners within a specific thematic area, uh, geographic region or sector. Um, so uh, you, you could imagine that a use case community who are interested in, um, I don't know, um, encouraging pregnant lady, pregnant women to participate in more physical activity because that's good for them during their pregnancy. So we could build a use case. There probably is already a community of people looking at that. In fact, we know that there is because we're, we're trying to engage with them at the moment. But 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 actually, you know, from an open active point of view, we would want to become part of their community, and we and that is what makes it a use case community from a, a, an open active perspective. And then lastly, what's mean by framework? Um, and actually, a framework is just a collection of stuff. Uh, it's a collection of principles. It's a collection of rules. Um, it's a collection of uh, systems, processes, guidance that that enable an idea to be developed in a reasonably repeatable way. Um, I think the other thing to say is we've been thinking a little bit as we've developed the framework about a, how big use case communities need to be and actually we think a use case community could range from one organization to a hundred organizations you know we don't see that a community has to be really big to be successful uh, we think some of the most successful communities are really small actually so, so we, we, we're thinking about making those kind of communities scalable so and one of the things we're doing with the framework is thinking about how we make it scalable and make it usable by that kind of range of communities for that range of use cases go up the next slide please so we've been thinking about what the vision of the use case framework will be um <coughs> I think of the kind of core user groups as well. So we th we think there are kind of two main groups who will use this framework. Um, we think the first one is the kind of kind of open active as an initiative. So that is the uh, the, the team stewarding open active. Um, so that's currently the ODI, uh, and that's the members of the open active community. And we think for them the, the framework needs to be a tool that helps them identify communities, engage with communities, or or if they discover communities don't exist, to convene them. Um, and those use case communities will be the people who kind of prioritize and test and deliver use cases for a sector. Um, we need, think the framework needs to help uh, open active prioritize engagement and we need, it needs to be able to support use case communities through enable, it, we need to enable open active to support communities by providing them with guidance and tools and so on. Um, the second audience for the framework is the use case communities themselves. So the use case communities themselves, they will be understanding, prioritizing, and planning the delivery of use cases in a sector. They will be testing and developing, developing and testing ideas to solve problems. Uh, they'll be evaluating their solutions, see if it's, if it's had impact uh, by applying a, a standardized process for, for monitoring engagement and learning. Um, and then they'll, where, where solutions are viable, where use cases are proved to be viable, they will implement them. Um, so if we go to the next slide, this is kind of a visualization of the, the, the kind of whole framework process. Um, so so, so uh, we've kind of got a three step process with, with kind of wrappers either side. So um, the, the, the kind of first part of the process is, is this kind of engagement and this convening. So, so this is open active as a community identifying um, uh, potential users of the open active data. Um, identifying communities of those users, engaging with those communities um, or convening communities where they don't exist and helping them understand why open active matters, how they can use it, what they should do with it. Once we've got a kind of engaged community, we will then help that community understand and plan how they can use open active data in their community um, and come up with a, a, a prioritized list of use cases and plan some delivery. And there are different options for how that delivery could happen. Once all that planning is done, the, the use case community uh, will get on with kind of developing uh, use cases and testing use cases. Uh, 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 that might be delivering product. It might be uh, developing a kind of extension to the standard. It might be developing guidance. Uh, it, it will vary from use case to use case, but they will do some development work. And as they develop, they will learn from their development uh, uh, and their delivery, and they will move into the kind of learn and publish stage and they'll start evaluating whether their solution has met the problem they defined at the start 
uh, and they'll start to understand the kind of cost benefit and then they will be able to publish the results of their work. And I guess the ultimate goal is that actually if we have a use case community that has tested a use case and found that it is viable, uh, the, the framework will then support them in implementing that and actually turning that into a thing that exists in the, in, in the kind of real world um, outside that kind of testing process. So can we go to the next slide? So in terms of what the framework will be, um, the framework is a bag of tools, essentially. Um, and for each phase of the framework, what we're aiming to do is to define the objectives, the processes, the tasks, the responsibilities, um, and the tools that are available. And there will be a kind of summary document that will do this for each phase. Uh, and then there'll be a set of tools and the, the, the use case communities can pick up and, and, and use. Um, the, the image here is just an example of one of those kind of process maps. I think this was for the plan stage, but I can't quite see it because my screen is very small. Yeah, this was for the plan stage. And what we're going to do is we're going to have kind of one of these process maps for each of the stages of the framework, to make it really easy for people to follow through. And those process maps define inputs and activities and outputs. It'd be useful to know what else would be helpful um, in terms of the things that we provide. And what we will do is when we've got a, a, a version of the framework that's a little bit more polished than it currently is, um, which will be after Tim comes back from his holidays, um, we, we will share that quite widely for comments and, and for, 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 for feedback. So through for the next slide. Um, one of the things the steering committee asked us about was how these use cases get funded. Um, so the steering committee are really keen that we start to identify new sources of income for open active to make it more sustainable so that we're less reliant on sports england funding in the longer term and they see use cases as a way of doing this uh, so we've kind of thought about how funding use cases might work um, there isn't a big pot of money in the center of open active to fund use cases unfortunately um, and we think actually the people who are best placed to fund use cases are probably the use case communities and we think there are lots of different models that, that, that could exist. So you could have a use case community um, where a member of that community funds and delivers the use case on behalf of the community. Uh, you could have uh, a use case community where members collaborate and they deliver solutions using their own resources, but in a kind of collaborative way. Um, but there could be a, an option where community members all put some money into a kitty and co-fund an external delivery. Um, or, or it might be that a use case community doesn't have any funding and therefore it needs to start identifying external funding pathways. Um, in terms of supporting that, um, I think there are a couple of things that are really important. So Open Active as an initiative could administer funding applications and contracts on behalf of communities if they needed that. Um, and I think the second point is that actually we, we probably need to be better at accounting for the kind of in-kind contributions members of the community are making. So we know there are dedicated members of the open active community who are probably working in use case communities at the moment, but how do we start accounting for their time and actually showing that the value that that is adding to the initiative. Um, kind of next slide, Tim. Uh, so I think at this point, I'm gonna hand over to Charlie um, to talk about opening school facilities because perhaps unwittingly, Charlie has been living the use case community dream uh, for, for a few months now. Um, so I'll hand over to him so he can talk about the work that he's doing. Uh, do you have slides, Charlie? Only a couple. I wanted to keep it very short and sweet. Uh, Tim, I might need you to take your slides down to... Um, yeah, that's fine. I'll do that. I can then... Um... Hopefully that was smooth and everyone can see my screen. <laughs> Um, super. So, yeah, thanks, Andrew. So, um, as Andrew's alluded to, um, uh, from a play finder and also an upshot perspective, I can't say I'm representing upshot specifically, but uh, this is a piece of work we've worked on together to get it to this point. Um, we've been looking to pull together a, a vision for a use case community and then um, have engaged uh, sex partners, including Nikki Cousins, who's on the call today, um, in trying to bring that, um, bring that vision to life. So, uh, there is a a long, a larger three or four extra slides behind this deck that I've hidden. I've just kept kept this really to the to the slim bones that hopefully it just extrapolates what it is. Um, but what we so sort of the last slide, so it doesn't tell the story of how we got here. But what we've um, tried to surmise is a vision for activating school sites as a use case community, um, looking at how well we can 
activate a school site, monitor the impact of a school site and how open active can be um, shown to add value to, a, to, the, to the activation of a school site. Um, so um, an outcome of what this use case community um, could look at um, is um, with funding that's being provided um, nationally into um, opening and activating school sites currently, um, I've, I've listed three funding pots that kind of speak to, to this kind of use case community being opening school facilities, which is um, a department for education um, funding program that's been contracted with the Active Partnership Network national team alongside uh, strategic partners like UK Active Street Games and the Sport Trust. Um, holiday activity and food, again, a Department for Education funding program um, being um, uh, delivered via local authorities or contracted active partnership partners. And Go London, um, which is a London fund um, uh, being administered by the Greater London Authority, London Marathon Events with supporting partners like London Sport, who are on the call through Ollie. So there's lots of funding um, being provided into activating school sites um, to look at using and testing use of that funding um, or at least its presence to um, look at digital adoption as part of a school site activation so school facility utilization either by external providers coming in or by the community as well as the activity on that that school site um, and looking to try and harness um, uh, the tracking of that activity in open active compliance systems uh, booking systems but I don't think we need to limit that to to just booking as a single as a single use case um, which we'd expect to see the natural increasing of community awareness and access through open active but also the the sort of centralizing of, um, of and generation of, of data around what's happening on a school site um, uh, we'd look to pass that through to and share that data into um, an MEL platform which is where you can see the presence of um, a platform and, and operator like Upshot coming in um, so that we can look at that community use and participation data um, pass it through to the MEL platform in real time um, in the future um, with a view to analyzing and reporting on its social impact so we can really understand um, what uh, what's going on the school site and how impactful it's being within its community for its children and young people and the communities around around the school. Um, and then hopefully use that impact and learning knowledge, the evidence um, to be able to drive sustainability planning for schools and communities around and hopefully drive future future funding decisions. Um, so there's a almost arguably a, a, a slim presence of open active, open active here in terms of commuting awareness and a, a much larger part of the social impact piece that Andrew was perhaps speaking to of, of how we layer in social impact into the open active story. Um, so that's kind of what we're hoping trying to achieve um, to try and make that more digestible of what the, the community might look to do in its initial phases where it's come to life. Um, we've kind of written out a few digestible goals um, so we're not going to achieve that real time reporting between a cluster of booking systems and MEL platforms, upshot views, um, data hub, you know, moving communities all being part of that thought process um, uh, in, a, in a short time frame. I mean, that's not going to be an overnight success. Um, but these things are, are, are more tangible and achievable. So, so we're looking to identify um, individual little clusters of schools who believe in this vision and, and uh, would welcome testing, testing this approach with us. That might be um, an individual cluster of individual schools in a place like London, it might be a single multi-academy trust um, in a particular county as example, so really digestible and very targeted um, groups of schools. We want to keep that, that list as small as possible, so we do high quality in a small number rather than spreading ourselves too thin. Um, uh, we're looking to team up with identified sector partners to shape this vision, um, build on what's already documented um, and uh, test the approach and share the learnings of this. So we've had conversations with um, the Active Partners network um, and the YST about um, uh, what how this crosses over with opening school facility kind of vision and mission and goals um, and we want to extend that to um, the Go London funding partners as well uh, which we've, we've started conversations on with London Marathon events um, uh, so it's really important that uh, we've got the right right stakeholders involved to be able to drive this forwards um, we'll, we want to approve evidence as quickly as possible, so a short sort of uh, test and learn period where we look to get an impact and learning report um, out of um, the school sites that we start working with, um, so that we can use, use that to, to better understand the role of the digital infrastructure that's operating across those school sites and, and act, helping activate them. Um, and then in the future, perhaps four is the long term goal, not the short term one is strive for better connectivity between booking systems, that is when I say systems, but other systems inclusive uh, and MEL platforms to underpin the sustainability and growth and that, that starts to potentially represent how this could, could scale out after the, the use case is, is evidenced and proven. 
Um, so um, two very short and sweet slides, but it's just to give a sort of indication of how use case communities are being, being seen to be, to be brought to life, hopefully useful to, to see. Thanks, Charlie. I don't know if, uh, come back to you, Andrew, if you had anything to add to that. Uh, no, I, I, th I think Charlie's example is a really interesting example of what it takes to form a use case community and uh, the, the actions that you need to take once you've got a community formed to, to kind of um, start to, to define and deliver use cases. Um, I, th I think just to finish, um, within phase five of Open Active, there are kind of three priority areas identified for use cases. One of them is opening school facilities, which Charlie's just talked about. Um, one of them is social prescribing, and we're currently doing quite a lot of work with um, people at Sport England and within the NHS to try and find the best route into social prescribing. Um, and Sphere's doing a great job there from a kind of policy perspective, so that's kind of policy-led. Uh, and then finally, uh, disability sport. Um, I don't think Barry's on the call today, uh, but I know he's been doing excellent work there, which we need to catch up on. Um, I think uh, what we would be interested in understanding uh, moving forward, though, is the, commu the communities that people in the AEF are already engaged in who could make use of the use case framework. Now, I kind of plan to have a discussion around this, but we, I don't think we have time to do that today. But if, if you're part of a community that is using open active data or could be using open active data, and you would like to do the sorts of stuff that Charlie has talked about that he's just done in the, in the opening school facility space, if you come and talk to Tim and I, we, we have a whole set of resources that can help you. And we would really like to test those resources with you and with your communities. We don't have money, but we do have kind of resources and, and the support available. Um, so I, I think um, maybe this is something we use Slack for, Tim, and we set up a, a Slack um, discussion around use case communities. And we will include a link to that in, in the meeting minutes somehow. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, we just thank you andrew and charlie that was that was really good um we're just coming to the last couple of minutes so i just open the floor for any questions or comments from anyone either to andrew and charlie or if anyone else uh, who didn't have a chance earlier has a quick question for dave or anyone who would like to raise any small items of any other business quickly in the last couple of minutes Uh, is there any progress on an active on a directory? Well, actually, having a, a, di a kind of open organisations rather than just the activities that are going on, as in a sort of cl club finder, club directory yeah. type of thing. Um, I don't like open think there is. Um, I think that would be something that will be raised at W three C, but I don't know if it's been planned for a specific date on the agenda. Um, I don't know if Howard or Andrew. Yeah, I can just speak on that briefly. We are, I think we want to do a little bit of exploratory uh, work uh, and thinking through before we bring that to W3C. So it's definitely on the radar, but but um, I don't have a timeline yet. So uh, a month to six weeks, I would say, we, we could probably come back with an update on that. Great, okay. thanks, Howard. Cool. Okay, we're just hitting time and no one looks too poised to jump in with anything. So I think at that point, I'll probably bring the meeting to a close and just say thank you uh, to Dave, Andrew and Charlie for speaking today. And thank you to everyone who came. I think it's been a really good meeting. Um, a quick um, update that I will be on leave for the next Adoption Engagement Forum. So you'll be in the very capable hands of Andrew, who will be chairing the next meeting. Um, so if you want me back after you've experienced the much greatly improved uh, chairing experience of Andrew, then I will be back at the subsequent AEF in four weeks time. But yeah, Andrew will be chairing the next meeting in two weeks time, but hope to see you all there. <laughs>